Hey everybody, and welcome to The Indie Guy. I'm The Indie Guy, and I'm here to talk to you guys about Chris Seaver's films from Low Budget Pictures. Uh, but before I do that, I want you guys to subscribe so that we can get 100 subscribers by January. That's like the plan right now. Uh, so before the new year, let's bring in 100 subscribers. That means you subscribe, tell other people to subscribe, and then we'll get a whole bunch of people. And that'll be awesome. Uh, also, uh, check out uh, the indie underscore guy at the indie underscore guy. Um, and that's going to be for Twitter and for Instagram. And check us out on Facebook as well. All right. So first of all, um, I want to talk about low budget pictures. Uh, this is for their uh, Ghoulish Chronicles from Bone Jack High and. First of all, uh, I want to give you a little backstory of how I got, like, my love for Chris Seaver. Uh, first of all, I read about him in Make Your Own Damn Movie, the book by Lloyd Kaufman. He talked about Chris Seaver and, um, a little bit, and a low budget pictures. And by, back then they had, like, a website, lowbudgetpictures.net. And I went to it and I was perusing and I thought, oh, this looks really cool. So I checked one of them out and it was, like, a, like, I don't know, like, uh, all this information about all the films that he's done. And he had done a lot, and a lot more than I had, because I hadn't even, like, that That was, like, 2004, I believe, when I first started talking to him, about 2004 or 5, and I was like, oh, man, this is kind of cool. So I uh, checked him out, and uh, back then I was on AOL Instant Messenger, which I'm not on anymore, and Chris Seaver had actually found me through my email address and contacted me. And I thought, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So we chatted. I never talked to, like, an independent filmmaker who actually had stuff, like, available. So I, and his stuff was on Netflix. So I was like, all right, cool. So I checked out the stuff, and I thought it was really cool looking. And I, uh, I was, uh, he asked me what, um, you know, what was the first film I was going to look at? And I said, Quest for the Egg Salad. And he said, uh, if I don't ever hear from you again, I'll understand why. Mm. That should have gave me a little bit of a scared kind of thing. But um, uh, I, I checked it out nonetheless. And, um, you know, I've never regretted since. Quest for the Egg Salad is one of my favorite movies of his. And I'm actually going to get into the top 10 uh, LBP films. And I'm also going to talk about Warlock Entertainment, which he he does as well. And uh, and then, you know, everything else that I, I know. Um, but here are my top ten movies and uh, from him. And some of these you can get on uh, Amazon. Some of them you can't get anymore because he only had it uh, himself. And he is now no longer um, selling them anymore. Uh, so sorry. Uh, if you want to come watch some of them, come on over here and hang out with me. But, alright, so, first, I'm gonna, I've got a whole bunch of these on here. See all these? I think I've got a couple on here, too. First one I want to talk about, there's no particular order in the top ten. There's no top, actual top ten. I just picked up ten that I really, really liked, and I don't, I can't even, you know, get into which uh, ones I, I like the best. But, um, first of all, it's uh, Ski Wolf. Uh, Trin Haga, Billy Garbarina together. Uh, they've been together in like Gimme Skelter and a few other movies, but this was like bar none one of my favorite films. It's like uh, Teen Wolf meets uh, Ski School, is what they uh, described it as, and it's hilarious. Uh, Casey Bowker plays uh, the Ski Wolf, and uh, it's just, it's hilarious. I love it. It makes me laugh so hard. Um, then I've got. The Filthy McNastiest uh, and Filthy McNastier. Um, Filthy McNastier is my favorite of the Filthy McNasties. Uh, I don't know why. I just think it was kind of fun and kind of goofy and, and uh, had a very silly kind of premise. Uh, I think and Chris differs on which ones he likes or whatever, and I, I don't think he likes Filthy McNastier better, but I don't know. So that would be something you'd have to, I guess, ask him. But I was a big fan of uh, Filthy McNastier, Maxim Douche. Uh, but Filthy McNastiest is really great, too. 
So check that out. You can get both of those you can get on Amazon still. Um, Mulva 2, uh, Kill Teen Ape. Uh, that was fun. Debbie Rashawn, the hot Debbie Rashawn is in it. Um, she is wonderful, great person. Always really nice to meet in conventions and everything and does such a great job. I should have got her should have got her to sign these uh, when I had a chance, when I saw her. I guess next to and John see her at. Film Crew and Wet Heat. Uh, film Crew was okay, but Wet Heat, man, that thing was hilarious. And I, oh, that was one I didn't get Heather to sign. I usually got Heather to sign a lot of these DVDs and stuff and just didn't get her to sign that one for some reason. Anyway, uh, that was good. Um, Terror of Blood Fart Lake. Oh, love it. Love this movie. If you have not seen Terror of Blood Fart Lake, I know the title sounds bad, and I think sometimes it's just Terror at Blood Lake or something, you know, when they take out the fart just to make it sound more appropriate for uh, stores or whatever, but it is hilarious. And it's got some really cool um, characters, including a friend of mine, Nicola Fiore. Um, she's a wonderful actress. I uh, can't wait to work with her myself, and uh, she does a great job in that. Uh, now, this movie is going to sound very much like a porno title, and it is not a porno title at all. It's not a porno. There's very little, like, nudity even involved in it. It's the Anal Paprika, um, 2 and 3. Now, 2 is okay. Everybody's, uh, everybody goes gaga over 2. I love 3. It was a very much like a Buffy kind of fun, kind of like silly kind of one and all about like witchcraft or whatever, I, I think, and stuff like that. It was fun. So uh, really goofy and silly and uh, had some good nudity and Doug Sackman is in three and I just, Doug Sackman is a great actor and I really enjoy him. And so, uh, Quest for the Egg Salad, which is the one, the first movie I ever watched of his. Uh, and has, stars Tina Kraus, and I love her to death. She's so sweet. And um, and first time I ever had a crush on this girl right here, Jen Stone. Um, she's she was wonderful in the movie, very funny. Um, Teen Apes and then Bone Jack. So like their cast of normal creature uh, characters and stuff. Also commentary uh, on all almost every disc of theirs has commentary. And I love their commentary because they get, like, the uh, crowd together for it, and it's just hilarious. Here's, uh, wait, these ones are, uh, let's see, these ones are, like, my top three to, why is Blood Trim in there? Blood Trim is a funny one. It's a short, uh, I think, 30 minutes long. Very funny. I think, I don't think I brought all of them, did I? Well, here is a kind of a, like, I don't know, I guess that wasn't all my ten. I had uh, Heather and Pugly, um, I, I, the Heather and Pugly 3 uh, was, you know, Cock Block the Apocalypse. I really liked that one. Um, also liked the movie that was another ti uh, porno title called Scrotal Vengeance. Um, a sounding title, but it's, it's not, I don't, I don't think there was any nudity in that one. I could be wrong, but I don't believe so. Uh, there were some really crazy characters, and it was a vampire movie, and very funny um, stuff. But then we're going to talk about kind of a few other ones that I love. Um, Return to Blood Fart Lake is really good and really funny. Um, it, it's not as funny as um, the original Terror at Blood Fart Lake, but it's very close. Um... And then there's Karaoke Kid. I love this movie. This is my first introduction to Heather Maxson, who I've met, and, and she's really sweet, and she's also really good in this movie. And um, and Moist Fury. Moist Fury as a screener I got. I, I think there might be an actual copy of it somewhere online that I could buy, but um, Moist Fury is really funny. It's kind of like street trash, I guess, and there's other... Uh, you know, very Death Wish meets Savage Streets. That's it. Savage Streets and stuff like that. So it's, it's really over the top and silly and goofy and really bizarre characters. So um, definitely to check out. Now, uh, I, I've, I love all the Heather and Pugly movies, so I can really choose for that. And I, I said the Cockbock, the Apocalypse was my favorite. Um, I love the original and the second one was Crucify the Devil. Very funny. 
very funny stuff. Uh, those characters were just really goofy. Um, so definitely worth checking out uh, those. Now, if you can, I don't know. Like like I said, these a lot of these are kind of be out of print, basically. Um, so if you can't watch them, I'm sorry. Uh, bug Chris and uh, maybe copying something for you or whatever, I guess. Or somebody else. I don't know. Pirate them. I don't, I don't know if I should have promoted that, but oh well. Because uh, these movies are really great. They're, they're fantastic films, and everybody should be able to watch them. Now, I'm going to get into The Warlock. Uh, Chris had taken kind of like a break from LBP, his low-budget picture stuff. And he wanted to kind of concentrate on uh, doing something new. And he decided to do like an 80s, you know, like uh, throwback and stuff, like shot on video um, with a lot of the same crew from his original movies. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple ones that I have. Um, I, think, I think these are all I have. Um, I might be missing one or so that's up there somewhere in my, in my collection. But uh, first of all is Dibu Cube, which is not my favorite of Chris's. Um, I like it, but it's it's I've only seen it once, so maybe I should watch it again. Um, uh, so I'd, I'd have to check that out again. Um, maybe I like it uh, the second time. Uh, I don't know why it wasn't. I, I just think it was just kind of a, a boring, boring version of the of the stuff. This one was hilarious. Happy holidays. Uh, Josh Swire uh, does such a great job in it, and is really creepy. I love him. He works with uh, Chris a lot and everything like that. So definitely, definitely a good one. Um, the Death of the Lantern movies, I can't just do one and talk about just one. Both of them are hilarious um, and fun and just really good throwbacks to, like, slashers and stuff. Um, then uh, the... Second to last one, Stoinky Beach. Um, oh, man, I forgot to bring down Sex Squatch. That's a really good one. Sounds like porno title, but um, it's uh, it's really funny. Uh, but yes, uh, Stoinky Beach is really goofy and very much a... Uh, it's not a... Uh, it, it's a throwback to, like, Porky's. You know, not uh, horror at all. It's got a little bit of, like, sci-fi stuff going on it. But um, This is like the creme de la creme. This is Evil Knight, which was his uh, remake. Uh, I believe he's only done one remake in his life. So this was his first and only remake, and I really, really enjoy it. Um, sorry, there's a dog that's uh, acting silly right now and scratching himself, so you can kind of hear that in the background. Uh, let's see. And that was... That was it of the Chris Seaver kind of uh, stuff. Um, there's other films that he's done. Teenage Goes to Camp, which was his like camp Halloween or not Halloween Friday Thirteenth kind of thing. And um, there's a few other, there's a few other films that he's uh, that he's done. So um, I don't know. I I can't decide which ones are my favorite. Like at all. Like I can't. I, one of my, I mean, uh, I keep leaning towards Ski Wolf as one of my favorites. Don't know why. I just think it's just so goofy and over the top that it's fun. Uh, there's some few that I still need to buy, um, but haven't gotten a chance to. Uh, Phantom of the Grindhouse, I think, is one of them. Sounds really funny, but I just haven't uh, gotten a chance to check it out yet. But, anyway, if you're a Chris Seaver fan, um, I hope you agreed, uh, if you are a Chris Seaver fan, please, in the comments below, tell me what is your favorite Chris Seaver film. Do you like Ski Wolf? Do you like Mulva? Do you like, um, everybody seems to dig, like, Mulva and, uh, and, and, uh, Filthy McNasty, which are together on one, uh, DVD. Uh, I'm hoping to get more stuff later, of uh, just to add to the collection. Just haven't had a chance to yet, um. Oh, Destruction Kings I really like, and I need a new copy of that at some point, because mine's uh, worn out. But I love that movie. Uh, just for some reason, having Teen Ape and um, Bone Jack together as, like, uh, paranormal investigators and stuff. I've also got a couple uh, screeners and, and, and things that Chris sent me uh, for buying a whole bunch of stuff, like... 
there was a Teen Ape and Bubbles Merry Christmas kind of thing, and um, just a couple other ones. So I'll, I'll definitely, I always love, like last year I did it where I'll be watching like Chris Seaver, uh, like holiday movies uh, during uh, uh, the Christmas season. So definitely things to check out, uh, especially around this time of year. Well, thank you guys so much. This is the longest video I've done so far uh, because I can't go through all of his like 40 or something movies that I've got of his. But I can't go through what I've got and what I've done. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, keep checking back uh, for the next uh, one I do. I think it's going to be a, a new review. Not sure what yet. Uh, so, uh, keep checking back, and, uh, oh, and tomorrow I'll be going thrift store shopping, so I've got a new VHS player, and I can't wait to get some new VHSs, and maybe I'll show you guys some of those tomorrow, um, as well as other stuff that's going on, you know, this is gonna be a great, this is gonna be a great start to this, so hope you guys enjoyed it, uh, check back, let me know what you guys think, uh, in the comments below, and, um, and definitely give it a thumbs up. Alright, have a good one. Bye.